Welcome to the Intentional Man Podcast, a podcast that inspires and equips men to lead lives of intentionality and grow to their full potential. I'm your host, Jonathan McGinley, a life coach that helps men just like you create the life that you want and live a story of significance through my coaching and tools on intentionality. Thanks for joining and welcome to the show. All right, welcome to the show. Uh, so glad you're here today, and I am excited to be joined by uh, Trenton Scott. Trent, how are you doing today? Hey, good, Jonathan. Thank you very much for having me on today. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. So Trent, is a uh, he's been a chiropractor ever since he was 24 years old. He's been doing this for 28 years. He's got his own practice. It's hard uh, to hear that. It's hard to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you're still going strong. You're looking good. Looking Thanks, good. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so he's been uh, he's got his own practice called Scott Family Health. It's in Northern Colorado. He's, they got locations in Loveland and Fort Collins. And what I love about what they do is they focus on a lot of different areas. It's not just chiropractic; they also have acupuncture, massage, and physical therapy. And they take just a full kind of body approach to getting people right. So I'm excited to have him on here. We're going to be talking about taking care of your body, how to do that, how to prevent injuries, how to deal with them when you got them, things like that. So I'm excited to pick your brain. So thank you, Trent, for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Of course. So let's just dive right into it. So as a chiropractor, obviously, you're kind of constantly seeing people come to you who are in pain. (laughs) Yes. Uh, What are some of the most kind of common ailments that men are typically dealing with that come see you? Well, when we look at pain, uh, certainly the demographic matters, right? The age of Mm -hmm. of the patient, Uh, 20s, 30s. You'll see different ailments strike at different times uh, or become more common. Um, I can say from my practice, average age is about 40 to 42 is an average. So we have a pretty good spectrum there. We see everything from athletes, younger, to, to an older population. So... Uh, when w- what we see is uh, honestly, you got low back pain, which everybody's, you know, understands and has had somebody or relative with low back pain. You get neck pain, shoulder pain, right, and then knees. So, and what's funny is when I when I talk to people, take a case history, Jonathan, uh, I'll say, "Where's your pain?" They'll say their shoulder. Well, they then they grab up around their neck, right, and shoulders yeah. out here. Right. So so those are the, some of the ailments that we'll see day in and day out. We actually see probably, if I had to say differential diagnoses, that we see clinically, you're at 17 to 20 differential diagnoses day over day. And then, of course, you get some strange ones from time to time. But you're in that ballpark. Mm-hmm. Neck, low back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain. And hip pain. Yep, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, you, you get people from all over, but yeah, those are typically the ones that that I hear of the most as well. But when you think of you know kind of the causes of these, let let me just ask you this: is it is it more genetics in a lot of these, or is it more kind of wear and tear why pe- why people are coming to see you? Well, I, if you look at some studies, and there's tons of studies out there. If you go to PubMed.gov, you know you can look up a study on anything. Um, you know, in 28 years of practice, so I want to speak clinically, just as a clinician of 28 years, an expert mm-hmm. in what I do. Um, so I don't want to, you know, th- there, there's a lot of studies that you can look up. Uh, studies in genetics, for instance, that have been done on twins, right? Um, what I've seen clinically is there is a genetic component, okay? And when I see, now that I'm multi-generational with my patients, right? Now I'm seeing grandkids, of the patients. Mm. And I mean, what I see genetically is you will see one or the other parent's uh, spine when we talk about spine. Okay. So it's never a mix of the two. They either got mom's spine or dad's spine. Mm. And you can look as kind of a snapshot to your dad, your mom, you know, if you, if your grandfather had back pain and your dad had back pain and you look just like him, I think there is a genetic, you know, observation there. Let's put it that way. That is a, an important part. And of course, then you spoke to the environment, right? Huge. Mm-hmm. What we do uh, in, our, in our environment. What is our workload? If your father was a bricklayer and you work on a computer all day, that's different. So, so yes, there's a genetic component that has to be thought about. Uh, but environment plays another big role. And I know that there's other, other factors, and I'm sure you hit on it with nutrition and things like that. But there is a genetic yep. component that you should be aware of. And have you ever seen, um, like, well, let's take crooked teeth, for instance. 
you know, if your parents had crooked teeth, you probably have crooked teeth and you probably have braces. Mm -hmm. So I think of it in the, in those terms. And I always ask, uh, multi-generational just for information for me, because curiosity is a big part of what I do. I love to ask people questions. Um, you know, when you look at mom, dad, you, you have to, uh, say, which one do you look like? You know, well, which, which parent do you look like? Oh, I look like my dad. I don't know. How, how's his back doing? You know, those kind of mm, things. Yeah. yeah. Yep, for sure. So I, I, obviously there are kind of elements to both of it with genetics and with wear and tear and all that. And that all plays into it. And, uh, you know, and I love, you know, what I came to see you with your back, with my back pain, it was a lot of, you know, getting that history, trying to get the full story, um, so that you can really understand it. It's not just like a quick adjustment and you're done. It's like, let's, you know, let's really dive into this. That, that, that absolutely. I, I can tell you right now, if you're going to help someone, and I don't care in what capacity, the biggest tool we have is the case history. It is. Hmm. What's this person doing? You know, what's their past life? I mean, what do they do for, for you know, into a past? Uh, that's when you start to really get into a diagnosis or a differential diagnosis because back pain is not back pain is not back pain. It's very complicated. Mm -hmm. And the history drives kind of the diagnosis of that. Yep. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I want to get a lot into uh, just kind of prevention today as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If, you know, for, for our listeners, what can we be doing to try to take care of our bodies here? no matter what age we're at. And obviously we'll talk about, you know, care and things like that down the line. But so prevention, when we talk about that and mm -hmm. you talk about, you got a young guy who may not even be thinking about his health right now, maybe not be thinking about his back pain, things like that. Um, what are some basic fundamental principles that people really should be doing to kind of set themselves up for success, to be, to have a more pain-free future? You know, that's a great question awesome question. And what I try to tell young people that are not having back pain, I myself have young adults as children, go and get a snapshot of your blood work. Go find out where you mm. are nutritionally. Okay. I think you'll be surprised. And I'm not talking about just to, you know, go to a function metal medicine doctor, get a full panel of blood work. And do you have high inflammatory markers? How's your vitamin D? How's your, you know, general, general health. That is one step to take. That is one step. When you have telltale signs of any type of pain, shoulder, neck, and it lingers for more than two days, sometimes the prevention can be um, going in and seeing a practitioner, whether it's a chiropractor, physical therapist, and get a snapshot of where you are. You and I talked and I said, the first step is to see, hmm. let's objectify what we're talking about. So if we do an x-ray, Let's, uh, what are we seeing on this x-ray? Did we have a congenital anomaly that we didn't know about? There can be many, th many things. When you go to the dentist, uh, and even a new dentist, what do they do? They take a picture of your teeth. Why? Because they need to see if there's cavities. And cavities start small. Back pain starts very small. Shoulder pain, neck pain starts small. Uh, almost unnoticeable until it isn't. And that's where I'm in, in the demographic of a 40 year old person, they come in for the first time with major back pain. And then they always tell me, well, I've had back pain in the past, but it's always gone away. And now it's down my leg and in my glutes. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, this has been coming down the train tracks for 10 years. And then when we, when I objectify it, take an x-ray, boom, I look at it and go, okay, you've had a problem for a long time. So your young listeners out there, let me tell you, get your blood work done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get a snapshot. A, a, an x-ray of your low back is like 58 bucks. Okay. Uh, cat out of pocket for 58 bucks. You can get a snapshot of what, what's your spinal health look like. And people talk about radiation. No, no. It's as much as a dental x-ray. There's no radiation on, today, but today's technology, it's nothing. It's a flight from here to New York city, you know, as far as radiation. Yeah. So what I'm saying is get a snapshot of where you're at, especially if you've had little blips. Oh, yeah, my back, I was kind of down the back last year for two, three days. It's coming. Be smart. That's that little mm, cavity. I think I feel some sensitivity. Let's get it looked at. So those are two things you can do right away. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And with the blood work, you know, that's not something we typically hear about doing right away. I think, you know, it's typically, hey, go see a chiropractor, go see a doctor, do this, do that. So can you kind of expand on that a little more of like, what is the exact importance of doing that? And what are you looking for? You know, if you were to get the results, what do you look for? 
What I'm looking for is vitamin deficiencies and or inflammation markers, something different there. Um, because w really when you talk about, if we're looking long term, right, we're looking for uh, deficiencies that will lead to degenerative disc disease, degenerative joint disease, osteoarthritis. You might have a young person that has a you know, uh, arthritis marker, a rheumatoid marker, something that shows up in the blood work and they didn't even know about it. Um, so I, I think just an overall health, you know, your, your back might be just great, but I'll tell you what, I had uh, my children at age, I think it was age 20, I had one of my daughters who, who rose for, for CU Boulder um, do her blood work and guess what? She had some vitamin deficiencies. I'm like, what? You're young. How do you have vitamin deficiencies? And I said, here we go. Let's start with the right supplementation. And that is going to, that's going to prove healthy or prove good for you and your health just in general. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, so you, you get the sample and you see some of these deficiencies. So then is the basic next step nutrition then of, okay, we got to kind of start supplementing in these areas you're deficient. Is that what I think for? It, that's it is to notice where you are deficient and then you can advise, I mean, my, my, I'm really an orthopedic doctor is what I'd look to, but when somebody can say, oh, here's my blood markers, um, and, and two, the, the practitioner or function, functional medicine doctor that does the blood work also is going to have a lot to say about that. And when you have that done, you can say, okay, I'm, I want to make sure that nutritionally my omega-3s are good, right? Omega-6s are good. It's a good place to start because if you're working out, if you're a high-level athlete, you're a young guy who likes to do that. You will be surprised at the, at the deficiencies that might show up. And let's head that off at the pass mm -hmm. so that you don't have problems orthopedically later. I'm just saying it's one facet of taking care of yourself that could, that could really be, it's like brushing your teeth kind of, you know. So, you know. All right. Yep. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, getting a blood panel, that's a great first action step. That I, don't, I, I don't think a lot of people necessarily do. I know that hasn't really been on my radar until I started working with you. And uh, so that's a great first step. The second one you talked about was just noticing any little ailments and taking care of them beforehand. I know I'm really bad at that. <laughs> and I think as men, we're pretty bad at that. If, if things start to hurt a little oh. bit, it's like, ah, I can tough it out. <laughs> I'll take some Advil. You know, yeah, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> I always tell people a general rule of thumb is if you, you know, there's a difference between workout pain and pain. And you got to, you, mm -hmm. you got to say, okay, that's different. But you also, a lot of men don't seek treatment because we're men, first of all, but second of all, we're, we're like, I don't, you know, I don't want to get roped into something. You know, I, maybe we don't want to hear the bad news. I don't know, but you got to have yeah, a trusted yeah. name that's going to shoot you straight and go, Hey, that looks sure. good. here's, here's what we're, we're saying a lot of nothing. This is good. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So, I mean, I think taking care of it on the early end is obviously mm -hmm. critical, but usually we don't take care of it until things are screaming at us. So talk to me, maybe we could talk back pain specifically, but mm -hmm. if somebody was to come in on the earlier end and start getting things going compared to somebody who came in when their back is really screaming at them, what's going to be the difference in terms of, you know, what you could have avoided if you came in earlier mm -hmm. uh, to get some treatment? It's massive. It really is. If they're wise, and I, let me repeat that, wise enough to do that, uh, I'll tell you what I can see. I Well, here's how the scenario goes, Jonathan, is let's talk about when people do come in in their 40s. Like I said, the mean age is 40, 30, 40. And they come in with screaming back pain. And then again, I take the picture, I look at it and go, gosh, this has been happening a long time. I wish I would. And you know what I might say? I wish I would have saw you 10 years ago. We could have prevented yeah. this whole thing. So when they do come in, in a prevention situation, uh, you want to make sure that there are many, many facets to what you can be doing, right? First is identifying any congenital problems that they might have that may be causing this pain. And even if they're not in much pain, that ounce of prevention, it, I might get in there and go, gosh, it looks great. But it's the educational process starts then, right? I, you, they have somebody to listen to. So they can catch things early now and they know if they come to me, uh, I, I trust Dr. Scott, he's going to, you know, I'm, this elbows, I don't know what it is. I was playing tennis. They know I'm going to look at it and go, okay, here's what's happening here. And here's how you're going to yeah. mitigate this into a future, right? So it's all about educating the patient uh, to what we see, or even if that's good, and then steps that they would do proactively. I, again, I'm going to make that dental references. You don't go to the dentist and then they say, okay come back and I'll clean your teeth again. No, they tell you to brush and floss and do all those things. That's a mm -hmm. prevention. My job is to educate you into that prevention 
even when you're not even let's let's see if we identify anything but even if you're not having pain i might say it looks good here's the telltale signs tell me about your workouts tell me about what yeah. your diet looked like and then maybe help them guide them on maybe some changes that need to take place but at least when something goes a little bit awry boy they can call me and go okay i i this i got somebody to talk to about this mm mm-hmm. Yep. Well, this is huge. And I mean, I think it goes right in line with the theme of the show of being an an intentional man is that we talk all the time about not being reactive, not, you know, being proactive instead of reactive, being intentional. So if you're being intentional with your health, that means, you know, getting ahead of it. That means being proactive. It means not waiting until something goes horribly wrong to then go to you. And uh, it's a hard thing to do. I know that I, I've been a little more on the reactive side of this with my back pain. You know, that's why I came to see you. And I was like, <laughs> I need to take care of this before I can get on the show and talk with integrity. But uh, that's been a huge thing, you know, that I wish I would have done earlier is come to see you before things were in, in you know, in such bad shape. So I think that's a big takeaway from this show is, guys, if, if, if you're feeling some pain right now, if it's mm-hmm. been starting to linger around, even if you're not, I mean, it may be worth going in and just starting this process, get your blood work done, go see Trent, um, and just get a snapshot of where you're at so that you can get in front of it. Yeah. Oh, that's for that's sure. Wise. So that's tr- wise. That's wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, you're providing it. So thanks. Um, I, I love what you said there of like, you would tell some guys some things that you could start doing mm-hmm. to kind of help prevent this. So let's just take, you know, back pain has been kind of the theme. So say I came in to see you, it's nothing too bad right now, but I'm saying, hey, I really want to be intentional with my health and getting ahead of this. What would be some of your recommendations to do? And you could take us through workout, nutrition, whatever it is. But what would you tell me in that case of what I should be doing now to prevent it in the future? So so that's a good question. So as you come in and you say, you know, I, I don't have to I have, I have stiffness from time to time. Right. The, fun, yeah. the one thing I told you early on is I wanted to identify. Let's objectify what is true. Right. So what was the first thing we did? Let's get an x-ray. Why? It's because we could look at a general health of the spine. Just like you would your teeth, general health of the spine. Tell me about this back pain. When do you notice it? Right. Um, And really not make, um, I like to objectify things and not make obtuse observations, meaning, you know, oh, your back's tight. Well, your muscle's doing this, right? No, I want to actually objectify on x-ray Are there any potential problems? Do we see some decreased disc height? Do we see some osteoarthritis? And by the way, when I have films done and I don't take the films in my office, a radiologist read the film, I read the film, you know, it's something that we can look to. And then I can say, hey, then we can start hitting on the things of what's your diet look like? Tell me about your workouts, right? Tell me about, Mm -hmm. you know, what's happening with this? Um, and people will ask me often, and, and a lot of times if I get an athlete in, I, I talk about performance. They know, and, an, and, and really you can classify an athlete, even a person that works out three times or more a week, you're running your engine pretty hard, right? Um, I would walk them through, okay, let's, let's look at this. Uh, we objectify what we're talking about, whether it be low back, neck pain. What are we identifying? Does this look good? Do we have any issues? Let's talk about your workouts a little bit, okay? When are you feeling this pain? And then let's look at it overall health as far as neurologic health, neuromuscular health, because that's where it starts is soft tissue. Everything starts on soft tissue. This mm. person may start with, you know, with neck rigidity or low back rigidity. That, that has to be addressed. And if it's addressed early, it's amazing uh, how you can educate someone to take care of themselves it's not and it's not there's not a lot of visits involved this is a this is a short yeah. course of information that puts the power you know one of our one of our key mission statements is to empower people right educate serve and empower yeah. is to empower you to ask the questions and the intentional man should come in and take that information and utilize it absolutely did that answer your question yeah that's really good <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. And I would I would be curious on what are some of the the common causes, I guess, that you see. Is it is it sitting at a desk all day long? Is it doing too heavy of squats or deadlifts? You know, like what are some of the things that you see that end up really aggravating your lower back? One of the let's talk about just a younger demographic that I do see. Let's say I see someone in their twenties uh-huh. and they've hurt their yep. back. And usually that it's that's what I'll see in a younger person is an injury, right? 
and I'll, I'll ask them about their workouts. And um, I'm always amazed at what they choose to do in workouts, right? Uh, meaning you can injure yourself if you're not paying attention. We, you know, I, deadlifts. Yeah, I, I'm not huge on deadlifts. I know what that does to the spine. I know the shear that that produces. Or I'll have people come in and say, I'm working on my core strength. And then we have to identify, really, what is that? Is that the stomach? Is that the hip flexors? There's a lot of things. A lot of good workouts have come out in these injuries, the, the strap workouts. You know, I'm more of a natural type workout scenario. Um, mm. But they'll come in with injuries to the back. And then I do have to look at what they are doing in their environment. Cause algae, environment's big. So you're right. What you do for work, genetics, those, those two things play in. Uh, and then what you do for activities, which would be, of course, in the environment itself. So those things will, will play a big part and part of a case history as to objectifying what the diagnosis is, what, what's actually hurt. Mm -hmm. What is the structures yeah. hurt in this person when they come to see me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, which I think is a huge thing to pay attention to what you're doing. You know, obviously working out is great. It can help prevent these things, but it also can help cause them if you're not doing things correctly. So, you know, that'd be a big thing, making sure your form is correct, making sure you know exactly what you're doing. If you need to hire a personal trainer or somebody to help you get the form correct, that's a big thing. Um, you're right. And with my, with, can, with my athletes, uh, just, you know, thinking of it when they come in and I mean, even the professional athletes, it's. It's saying, okay, um, I'm, I'm looking at this. Let's get you to physical therapy and show them what you're doing in your workouts. Show them what your workday looks like, mm -hmm. right? You play the drums, yeah. right? So yeah. we had somebody who was a drummer come in, right? Shoulders. You, you have to keep a professional drummer, keep your body. So he shows me a video of, this, of him drumming. I had no idea what that looked like. Right. His environment was I was like, OK, that's a little different than what I thought drumming looked like. So we were able to quickly identify an issue, which was not a big issue for him. I did my work, which took all of two visits. OK, get him into yeah. a physical therapist that I'm working with, that I'm objectifying his issue in his environment. He gets a catered, tailored program for his stretches and workouts based on what he's doing in his environment. And guess what? He, I, he's doing fantastic. He's like, this is makes sense. You know, I'm like, that's okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I love that's, you know, that's one of the things I love about your team and your approach and your business is that you tailor it for the right people. You get them into different things. Like I said earlier, you got acupuncture, you got massage, you got PT, you got chiropractic. It's a, it's a full kind of scale of services there. Um, ta let's talk about, I think the majority of Americans now are working in front of a computer mm -hmm. all day long and sitting there and stuff. So what are some of the best practices you can do there to make sure your posture is good, to make sure your back is good? Because um, I think this is obviously kind of a, a common trap that we don't think about a lot because we're just sitting. We're not like moving around, messing with our back, but obviously it can have some serious uh, issues that come with it. So what would be some of your recommendations for somebody who works and from a computer all day? I would get, I, uh, the first thing I would recommend is a uh, warm up routine before you even sit down. You, you know, you have to be intentional mm -hmm. about warming your body up before you even sit down. Then you have to be intentional about setting timers and break time for yourself because you know how we get in there and we're working or writing and we're not stopping. So let's, let's just say before you sit down, there's a 15 minute routine that you have to go through before you sit down. There is a late morning get up, you got three things to do at lunchtime, almost like four times a day. And it sounds like a lot, but once you start do, you know, putting that into practice, you know, at 10, 15, I'm up. All right. I've got to do four things. One, two, three, four, including breathing, right. Including some of the, uh, some uh, along with stretches and activities that is, is uh, just keeping you in motion. It's going to give you longevity as you sit there and, if done, as you know, if you don't do it over, what is it, 60 days, it's just going to become yeah. routine. You're going to know when 10, 15 is in your head just by sitting yep. there. So I think that would be something, uh, of course, workstation and posture is very big, right? Get your monitor at the right height. We, you know, you hear about this. Get a chair that makes sense, right? Um, there's a ton of different chairs and not all chairs work for all people, but you know, that's where I will say, okay, this one is a crowd pleaser. This one is a crowd. Try these and, yeah. and see what's going to work. Yeah. And then you have to actually 
tell them to take a picture of their workstation at home and say, what is that? You know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. can we be improving that? That's a kitchen table. That's not good, you know. So th that's something For you sure. can do if you're working on a computer all day. Yeah, that's great. And, and I, I'm, I think the taking breaks is huge. And there's a lot of, you know, tips on productivity, you know, as well, you taking breaks. So that's what I've tried to do is I set these little timers. And when it goes off, I know I have to stand up or walk around. And that also mm -hmm. gives my mind a break too. Um, or just in between activities, you know, making sure you take a little break to reset and stand up or stretch or what do you, what do you think about, um, standing desks? I know that's become kind of a bigger thing. Do you like mm -hmm. a combo of both? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes. A combo of both. That's, that's what I like. I, I think stand up desks are important. Uh, stand up desks, little stools, rest one leg on, right. Sit down from time, stand up. I think that, that, that change in, in, you know, that, environmental posture is big that's a big change and you should you should yeah. definitely think that way yeah that's great that's great what would be some of those you know the warm-up routine or just a few moves what what specifically would you be kind of thinking for those that would make sense for for us to do before we sit down what what exactly would that look like you know a lot of times and and just to be clear, I refer to my physical therapist oftentimes with this because they have For a sure. lane and we're yeah. going to talk yeah. about lanes, I think here, and uh, yep. they have a lane. So, but what I would do is, is, you know, a lot of things is laying down on your back, bringing your knees at a 90 degrees. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, slow, I, I don't even call them exercises. I call them activities yeah. because it's really not, you're not working up a cardio. So you're laying on your back, you're giving your back a break for a second, you're bringing your knees to chest one at a time, right? You slowly make some rotations. We've seen all these slow stretches before. You lay on your stomach, take two, three deep breaths, push up a little bit, right? Um, mm -hmm. Simple things like that, even like bring your leg up uh, to stretch the hamstrings, right? Um, so, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to get yeah. into a lot of detail because... Well, that's you, fine. You yeah. know, you're you can, but you know that you you should be doing. I would make it it's, to make it in, intentional is to make it as simple as possible, and that's where you'd ask mm -hmm. a physical therapist or or any uh, uh, you know occupational therapist and say, hey, give me um, something so simple, I'm going to do it. You know, right. I'm not going to go. Oh, you know, I'm going to say, yep, I like doing this, this, and this, and I get a drink of water. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Well, I think, you know, that's a lot of really good practical thoughts. So if you're sitting down all day long in front of a computer, so think about some of these, some of these things. Think about warming up a little bit before you sit down. Think about, you know, times in the day where you can get some breaks. Um, think about changing between sitting and standing, you know, doing a combination of both. Uh, it could be timers that you set that just go off and you know, at that point you got to stand or at that point you got to get up and walk around. Some of those things are so key and, and do take some intentionality because I know, you know, once we get going on work, it's easy to just all of a sudden it's noon and you've been sitting there the whole day and that's great. You're working hard, but, it, you know, you're kind of doing it in um, where you're, you know, not taking care of your body as you're doing it. And so that's a huge thing. So thanks for some of those tips. I would love to kind of get into um, kind of this full scale of services that you have, because I think most of the time when we have pain, we just think chiropractor at least for me. And what I hear most right. people think is like, I just need to go get an adjustment. So talk to us about, I think we kind of understand chiropractic. Talk to us just about acupuncture and physical therapy and massage and, and, and acupuncture, but just how all those work together and why it's important to maybe have a combination of both or do one or the other. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my whole career, I, I, I recognized uh, that, as I mentioned, there are lanes of care Right. And unfortunately, in, in our society, we tend to silo care, which is weird. Right. You go to the yeah. chiropractor. Oh, that didn't work. Now I'm going to the physical therapist. And he told me three different things. And that's not really working also. So I'm going to try Chinese medicine, acupuncture. I'm not even sure why, but my friend Sally told me I should do it. OK, so, yeah, I think uh, maybe it's working. But we don't even we don't even know what we're treating at that point. We're just all over the place. I decided yeah. a long time ago, I don't want to silo care anymore. There are certain diagnoses that tend to be or lean towards other practitioners. And I, me as a chiropractor, I have to be okay with that. So I decided, well, if I'm communicating with them, if I bring in this kaleidoscope of care, what diagnoses, that ailments that people come in with, well, how can they, how do you utilize acupuncture? What is it good for? Right. So I do have to understand that lane 
I don't drive in the, I, you know, I have to teach that lane. Like, okay, let's talk about soft tissues. Let's talk about disc irritation, right? Acupuncture is really good at that. It's an organ system problem. And I learned early on that an acupuncturist in many cases is going to help with certain diagnoses more than me. They all mm -hmm. work. Like we can look at studies, you know, physical therapy works, acupuncture works, chiropractic works. It all works. But in what parts and pieces and who's most needed based on the diagnosis that I give the patient, this is paramount. So again, I don't make obtuse observations like, oh, your back's tight and your pelvis is rotated and it's twisted and your leg's longer. And, and I, I say that in folly because those are observations. Those are not actual what structures are happening. Is it a disc? Is it a facet? And why? Right? Uh, is there ligament damage from a past? Then I know who to utilize. So if you, you know, you came in with back pain, I can say, okay, um, you have you know, this ailment, we, we would call it dorsopathy of the low back pain. You got joint pain. Uh, you're going to do three sessions of acupuncture over 10 to 14 days. You're going to do three chiropractic care. I expect you at a 66 to 70% improvement rate, right? Why the acupuncture? Because it's treating the soft tissue, the neurologic tissue, the muscles, something that I can kind of do, but I don't do it quite to the level of that. So mm -hmm. I decided, hey, or physical therapy, right? You know how all practitioners, and I'll just tell you, Jonathan, we all think we're the best, right? The doctors, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. the phys physical chiropractor doesn't work. Uh, it's physical therapy. Now quit fighting. It all works, guys. It's, it's just how do I put this together and how do I communicate with a PT or how do they communicate with me? Um, so I've spent a practice, my whole practice bringing practitioners together for you. So that I know, and then you have to learn and watch and be humble enough to know when somebody else, it's somebody else's lane to carry them. And then I, I always tell people, I try to quarterback it like I told you and say, how are we doing with this? Here's my, here's my clinical expectation when you step into my office. I have an expectation yeah. of when you should get better based on diagnosis. So acupuncture is great for soft tissue, neurologic problems, organ systems, visceral conditions, heartburn, headaches. I mean, they can treat migraines wonderfully. That they're things that I can't, you know, quite get to. Um, and I've seen, and I, you know, when I first started with acupuncture and I watched them do some things, I'm like, wow, what do I not know today? And I was pretty, I don't want to I would say it was old, but I was years into practice at that point. And it was, yeah. I got to learn this. And physical therapy, the same thing is how do you get a physical therapist and chiropractor to work together? Because as you were asking about exercises, I default oftentimes to a, a exercise, a, a specialist, right? They, that's what they do so very well. I'm a good diagnostician. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my job. And of course, we del deliver manipulation, but diagnosing the problem is the is the hardest part and it's the most important part not the treatment it's not the adjustment it's the diagnosis and why i'm adjusting mm. that, that makes a difference right mm -hmm. yeah well that's all really good and and it's 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 good to hear that they all work and they all work together and that you know for us it's having a combination of both is a really powerful tool or not both all of them a combination mm -hmm. is a really powerful tool that we can use uh, for prevention, for, you know, pain reduction, all these different things. And uh, so I, I love that. And that's why when I came to see you and you gave me different, you know, avenues to go, it was really helpful for me because, you know, it's not just chiropractic. It, it was part of that with acupuncture, with PT and gave me some exercises to now do on a daily basis, which was really helpful, which I would have never got if I would have only been, you know, doing one or the other. So I think that was um, really beneficial for sure. Let me let me ask you this question, because I think this is the big one uh, sure. that people think. Let's talk just money real quick. Is yep. this stuff worth the investment? Because I think that's that's one of the hardest roadblocks, I think, is this is going to cost a lot of money. This is going to be the rest of my life. I'm going to always be paying this. What do you tell people when that's like a big kind of obstacle or barrier? make the investment <laughs> because it, you can actually, an ounce <laughs> of prevention, the ounce of prevention is I see every day when somebody comes in and they're 50 and they have a major problem, then they're going to pay one way or the other. And it's sad because mm. now they're permanently, they have permanent scenarios. You know what I mean? And what I'm saying is you don't have to have back surgery. If you're very intentional right now, young men, you do not have to have back surgery if you're intentional right now. So let's talk about the investment. What I tried to do is how you bring down the, the price point. Instead of siloing sometimes and going to all these different practitioners and hearing a lot of confusing information, you need one, somebody who you can trust 
to say where you're at, make that investment, and then get you the care you need, teach you and empower you to stay healthy by means of what we spoke about earlier. And I'll tell you what, that is so worth the investment. Your body, you cannot, when you're 20, you think, ah, you know, I always laugh because I don't need a car. They'll say, I don't need a car. I'm like, not yet. <laughs> Talk to me when you're yeah, 50, yeah. right? Because so right. many people have a preponderance for having back pain. Um, so what I'm saying is the cost, um, and I've always tried to get into the minds of people to think, I mean, we don't think anything about going every six months to get our teeth cleaned. Hmm. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And if you're, if you're going for an acupuncture session, people ask me, well, how often do I have to see you? How often do I have to see you? Like if you stay healthy and you have an exercise program once a quarter, once every six months, depending on what you're doing, of course. Now, if you're like a downhill skier uh, during the winter, um, I might need to see you more. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But what I'm trying to do is allow you to make those decisions. Listen to your body and make those decisions. So honestly, you can do it and budget it. Right now, the biggest spend in healthcare, one of the biggest spends in healthcare, if not the biggest, is musculoskeletal pain. Hmm. So if you have an HSA account, if you have some, you know what? That's not just used for medications and that. It can be used for your body now, right? And I always tell people, like I had, I did have someone, and I might have brought this up to you, Jonathan. They said, well, how do you prevent degenerative disc disease, right? Because they, they had it. I said, well, about 15 years earlier, you, sh you should have been looking at your diet. You should have been looking at what you're doing at work. And you should have changed a lot of things. And we wouldn't be in this position we are now. But nutrition, keeping inflammation down in your body, um, being hydrated, uh, doing the correct workouts or right workout routines, right, and monitoring. So I tell people once a quarter, once every six months, depending on their activity level. The, they might take up bowling or they might – I can't – I don't live in their bodies. So we have mm -hmm. to be conversational every time. So when you come into my clinic, you don't just lay down and get cracked. That's not – you know, your back crack. That's not going to happen. I need to know, hey, did you change something? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I started, uh, you know, doing this activity or that activity. Uh, and and I've noticed I'm a little stiffer. Okay, let's talk about that. What's yeah. happening? So do the, do the prevention. Um, it is worth the cost. I know it's a cost, but what's your life worth? What's your walking around? Yeah. What's your walking around worth? I mean, I got to tell you, you're, you're in a living vessel. You're in a living machine. And unfortunately... You know, I don't meet too many 80 year olds that don't have back pain, neck pain and shoulder pain and knee pain. But you can mm -hmm. I think you can be intentional about avoiding a lot of that. Yeah, well, that's a great, great answer. Great point. And I, I you know, I always like to think that our bodies are our best investment, you know, in, yeah. in life. Amen. Our bodies Amen. are. It's like if, if you're not healthy, then uh, there's a lot of things that you can't do. So and, and just as you were saying that, you know, I was thinking about just a lot of times we talk about having a vision for your life and then being intentional about pursuing it. You know, it's like my vision for my life when I'm older is to still be active, to still be traveling, to still be able to, you know, play with my kids or whatever it is. And, and so when you have that vision of what your life is going to be in the future, if, if you're not healthy, then that vision becomes tougher to see become a reality. And so for me, as you're saying that I'm going, okay, yeah, if I want to do all those things, if I want to be active, if I want to be able to play sports or, do whatever it is when I'm older, then I got to, I got to start now, um, and be intentional now on making sure I can realize that vision. It's just like the same thing. If we set a goal out in the future, you have to break it down into small parts and start pursuing it. But I don't think we think about health that way. A lot of times of like starting with the end in mind, breaking it down to be like, okay, that means now I need to take care of my body. Um, yeah. I don't know when if I, you have anything to kind of I, I add do. on when to I that. Was a, when I was a young man, when I was, I, I did a lot of powerlifting, a lot of powerlifting. Uh, I didn't have any, you know, I squatted a ton of weight, lifted a lot of weight. I, you know, I remember getting done with some squatting competitions and you're like, oh, my, my butt's hurting or, man, I, I don't know if I should say that on your podcast. I'm going to say butt. Anyway, so my back's oh, hurting. Yeah. You're good. You know, something's happening here. And I didn't know what it was. And of course, as a young man, it went away. When I got later uh, in life and I took my x-rays and I looked at my back, I thought, oh, my gosh, I really hurt myself. You know, um, there was nobody there to help me. I didn't I didn't think about that until you think about it, until all of a sudden it's it's something you're facing. You're, you're mm -hmm. right about being intentional. You want to hold your grandkids. You want to go on walks. It, 
and and forgive me, what I see on TikTok and Instagram and what's being portrayed as healthy as far as being a beast and working out. And if I have all these muscles, I'll never have back pain. That's a fallacy. I can tell you that right now. I work mm. on guys that are professional athletes. You talk to any professional athletes and they are beasts. They're huge. And they come in and I have them come in and they'll say, why does my back hurt? And I'm like, well, your core strength is strong as an ox. Guess what? You got back pain. Mm. But then we talk about the breakdown of soft tissues. We talk about diet. We talk about genetics. It played in there. You've been working your, I mean, CrossFit is the number one patient maker for me right now. And people are like, well, I love CrossFit. I'm going to do it anyway. And they might not want to hear that. Be smart. Be smart. Working out and being yeah. healthy. Be smart about your workouts. It's not how much you can lift or how, how big your biceps are sometimes. It is about being healthy in diet and healthy in thought and being intentional about, you know, as much as I think a martial artist, a lot of times have a lot of things right as the way they look at their lean, their mean, their, their, you know, nutritionally, their stretch, they, you know, I think that's why I said, I like some of the strap workouts and I like some of those workouts uh, that I'm like, no, oh, that makes sense. You know, using your body weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So guys today, I, I would just encourage you to go from this podcast and just think about your workouts, think about your nutrition, think about how you're taking care of your health now. Even if you're not feeling any pain, um, this is the time to get intentional with it. Don't wait until it happens. That's mm -hmm. not what we do on this mm -hmm. show. We take things, we're proactive. Uh, so, so take some of Trent's advice today, some of the action steps he gave us and just do one of them. Just, just get the ball moving in the direction. Um, in the right direction for your health. Do it now. Don't wait until it's too late. So thank you, Trent, for being here as a community on this podcast. How can we support you and what you have going on? Oh, I, I, uh, I it's a pleasure being here. First of all, thank you. And, and I, to, to voice, uh, to come out and, and, and talk about my expertise. Um, I just want people to know, you know, uh, as a practitioner at Scott family health, starting at CEO, we we start with the patient in mind, you know. Educate, serve, and empower. Those are three things that I wanted to do, want to do for patients every day, and um, I think through that uh, we're better, and through multiple modalities we're better. So sure. I, I just appreciate the time today. Of course. Well, and that's uh, why I brought you on the show because you were great for my back, and I really did feel you know very much cared for. And Trent does an amazing job just listening. And like I said, having acupuncture, massage therapy and physical therapy uh, combined with the chiropractic, all four of those choosing the best path. That's why I think they're the, they're the people to go with if you're in Northern Colorado. So if you're looking to get started and you need somebody great, I'd recommend them. It's uh, you just go to scottchiro.com. You can get more information there, schedule an appointment. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Trent, for hey, coming. I appreciate and, uh, it. And, and if of any, of your, any of your listeners, if they wanted to come in and have a consultation, that's of no cost. They can come in and talk to me, and I'll put time aside. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That's a great, <laughs> a great offer. So go do it. Now you got no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trent. Well, thank you for your time. We'll, we'll talk All to right. you soon. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Intentional Man podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media, and leave a rating and review. If you are someone who is looking to take your life to the next level, accelerate your success, and live more intentionally, I would love to help. Shoot me a text at 970-430-6085, and we can schedule a time to meet to discuss your vision and your goals. Again, that is 970-430-6085. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, build a life that matters by living intentionally.